Free range chickens are probably the easiest and most rewarding farm animal that you can get. Their curious disposition and almost pet-like mentality can be fun to watch and even more enjoyable to raise. Now the benefits they provide are pretty amazing for such a small animal. And probably the biggest benefit is that they provide us with fresh eggs every morning, but also they eat unwanted insects like ticks, termites, and ants. Here's a bit of FYI. Fresh eggs don't need to be refrigerated, and they also don't come with a cardboard or styrofoam container straight from the coop. Yes, you can buy or get used ones from friends, but we wanted a more permanent fixture where the eggs could rest as we were using them in the kitchen. Something right near the stove that looked a little better presentable than a cardboard box. If you know or have this problem, this project solves this dilemma for you. I'm nicknaming this project the Egg Crib, as it's sort of a place where fragile eggs can rest sort of like how an infant rests in a crib. Now I'll provide the SketchUp files in the description, but this egg crib is custom to where I needed to hang it. So I would imagine you could make it bigger or smaller depending upon where you plan on installing it. I start by cutting the dimensional lumber to width and height. I then change out the table saw blade to cut the dado needed to hold the two boards together at a 90 degree. Here's a little trick if your table saw wrench can't be found or a strip like mine. I use a piece of wood as leverage to tighten down the arbor nut or to loosen it. After the dado is installed, I set the depth to a half inch using my combination square and proceed to cut the board that would be hung on the wall. Now I wanted my board that would be holding my eggs a bit narrow in thickness, just purely aesthetic. So I set my dado blades to cut only 5 8 of an inch with width and then just milled that board to the thickness checking on every pass through the planer until it was nice and snug. Next was to start marking out where we would need to start routing the holes for the egg holders. This was pretty easy as all I had to do was mark one and three quarters from the beginning edge and then two inches thereafter until reaching the other side, which hopefully will be another one and three quarters from that edge unless something went wrong with your measurements. Moving on to routing the holes, I used a one and a half inch round cutter that I'll list in the description, but only set my depth to plunge the router to about one and three eighths of an inch for the diameter of the hole. I got this measurement honed by cutting a test piece and then setting my depth to that. For me, it was easier to do one side at a time and move my clamp to hold down the other side. I was thinking to myself that maybe a drill press would have worked better, but I ended up with the router. Just a word of caution here. Take small passes when boring out the holes, as your router will want to jump if you take too much off at once. Also, don't try to board out all in one pass going slowly down, as the bit will need to cool off between passes, which is why I'm doing an up-down motion. This allows the bit to get a cooldown period between cuts. Just routing out the holes would have been suffice to hold the eggs. However, eggs are usually never perfectly round, nor are they perfectly the same shape. So I thought I would drill a one inch hole to better hold the eggs in place. Adding a small chamfer around all the exposed edges would give it a nice detail and break any of those sharp corners. Doing some preliminary sanding before the piece gets together is much easier than trying to get into corners by using hand sanding.
To establish a nice glue-up and to add additional support, I added screws on the back of the joint. To make it flush with the wall, I pre-drilled and recessed the hole to accommodate the screw. You could probably get away with this, but I didn't want a floor covered in egg goop at the end of the day. Alright, to glue up I just added a light bead to both adjoining surfaces and then screwed them into place. And this is one reason why I added screws, was to make the glue up a little bit easier and not have to deal with clamping this together. I use a damp rag to wipe off any excess glue caused by squeeze up and I use a plastic straw creased together to get into the corners. One of the last steps is to hand sand those edges in the holes that we drilled and remove any glue we missed, as glue will stand out like a sore thumb if we apply finish over. Getting a recipe from Will Walker Company, I boiled some mineral oil and pure beeswax and then let it cool overnight. The next day I started applying it to the piece. I chose beeswax and mineral oil because it's non-toxic and lets me keep my peace of mind when food touches it. I suppose it could be overkill for eggs as they have a shell, but I'd rather not risk it. Application of this finish is pretty simple, as you can apply it as heavy as you want because it won't hurt the wood. After I covered the egg crib from head to toe, I let the finish dry overnight. The final step is to take a new rag and wipe off any excess finish. That's it. Now get to cooking. What's on the menu? Eggs, of course.